My name is Randy Linville and uh, I farm with my nephew Dan Linville and we raise corn and soybeans uh, about uh, 15 miles south of St. Joseph, Missouri in Buchanan County. Uh, mainly all hill ground, rolling ground, uh, a lot of terraces, uh, mainly grass back terraces. Our ground is steep enough slope that we can't use too many broad base. Uh, we've been no-tilling for oh since about the early 90s and uh, I've had good success and with that and the last two years have started uh, implementing cover crops, cereal rye, uh, mainly behind corn going into beans and uh, like the results of that very much so far. Well, when we first started uh, no-tilling, uh, we were after erosion control. Uh, no matter, it seemed how we tried to prepare the soil, get the rain events and end up with a lot of erosion and major ditches in our fields. And so we uh, started experimenting with no-till to help control erosion. And, uh, and not only after four or five years, it took for the ground to kind of convert uh, we started having better crops with the no-till than we did with uh, tillage and plus the soil saving benefits and uh, just kept growing from there started with corn and then uh, got a no-till drill and started no-tilling beans and and uh, have been practically a hundred percent no-till ever since about the only time we work do any tillage is if we've had a piece of ground terraced or something and we till just to smooth it up and kind of loosen it up to sow a crop back into. So uh, just wouldn't want to go back to working ground anymore and things. So, uh, and we saw a sample on a grid, two and a half acre grid soil sample rotation every four years and then uh, uh, soil test, fertilize according to the soil test for our yield goals. and. Uh, have had really liked the results of that also. We're probably not saving a lot of money on fertilizer, but we're getting more bang for our buck because we're getting a fertilizer where it does us the most good. And uh, our yields have steadily improved ever since. And so we're gonna continue that. This field here had been in wheat last summer and we uh, sowed the cover crop uh, well, we got to sow this one twice. We sowed early September and the army worms moved in and so we got to redo it in uh, early October and the uh, we just let it grow. Got about the boot stage or a little over uh, timing this year and then we burn it down with uh, Roundup and 2,4-D. Sowed the beans about the 17th of May uh, posted once with uh, Liberty and Assure uh, late June and uh, that's all we've had to do so far with this and uh, this is it's worked real well so far and as he showed in the pictures there's still a mulch underneath the beans protecting the soil and things so there you can see the beans in, in this thinner spot uh, where we just started with the planter, you can still see uh, the residual rye where we burn it down. That cover, uh, that's going to stay there a while. And we're hoping that some of that will last till next spring and give us some cover for uh, no tilling corn into this. So, uh, plus, we think that we've been kind of hot and dry here lately and think that's helping us control our moisture loss somewhat. And, uh, and it helps mellow the ground for, uh, has a good effect on that. It plants easy. And this bean field is drilled and that was a seeding rate of about 140,000, uh, not too thick. So, uh, uh, just, just happy with it so far. I'm sure we'll find some things we have to adjust down the road for different years, but for this year it's worked real well for us, and so uh, plan to continue.
Well, our hope is to sow every acre behind corn at least, and then if we have time and uh, maybe some in some bean ground going to corn if time allows, but uh, our goal is if we can sow every corn acre every fall, we'll be pretty happy with that.